Welcome to Tech and Travel Episode 3, The Causes of Oil Blowby and Blowback. Q&A Episode 3 comes straight from the channel's popular XR650R Honda Top Engine Rebuild How-To Video, a step-by-step -step guide. Valued channel subscriber Tudor has an oil blowby and blowback issue. Like any DIY or professional tech, he'd like to find a simple solution. Decades of experience has taught me to rule out the worst possibilities first. Follow how this troubleshooting unfolds. You'll find ways to cut to the core of sudden oil leaks, blow-by, and blow-back through the intake system. Tudor writes, Hello Moses, I've been reading your stuff on the forum for a few years now. Can you please give me your thoughts as to why an XR650R could be getting oil in the air box from the crankcase breather and on the carburetor? making the throttle sticky and clogging the pilot circuit, making it run lean and rev out on its own. I clean it, and then it's good for a while. Then the oily residue makes its way back in, not overfilled with oil and no apparent smoke coming out. Air filter not over oiled. Started all of a sudden. Something to mention. At first I thought it might have had something to do with valve clearance, the hanging high idle and not coming down. I found intake valves tight, the exhaust with some clearance still. I responded, Tudor, thanks for your feedback and subscription to the channel. As you know, the XR650R is a dry sump lubrication system. There normally is a relatively small amount of oil at the oil sump pickup point in the crankcase. I'm unclear how much wear or hours you have on this engine. To rule out the possibility of intake valve issues or piston ring blow-by, into the crankcase, which could force oil out the breather or back up through the carburetor toward the air filter, I would start with a cylinder leak down test. See these two videos at the channel. I refer to the two videos. The more recent video shows exceptionally good cylinder seal. The first video is the engine in need of a top engine rebuild due to intake and piston ring troubles. If there is poor cylinder piston ring seal, the cylinder pressures will blow into the crankcase and overwhelm the breather system. Backflow from the leaking intake valves will go upward through the carburetor toward the air filter. If both issues exist at the same time, there will be oil from the crankcase blowing upward past the rings and into the combustion chamber. That oil would then leak past the intake valves and travel through the carburetor toward the air filter. If you do not have a leak down tester but have an oxygen acetylene welding brazing setup, you can carefully knock the porcelain and center electrode out of an old spark plug, remove the ground strap, and braze an air coupler plug into the spark plug shell. Clean away any debris or roughness on the remaining metal spark plug shell. Bring the piston to precise top dead center on its compression stroke and with the tool, fit it into the spark plug threads. Apply around 60 PSI, more if necessary, to the air plug. This will pressurize the cylinder with the valves closed. And if the rings are not sealing, air will rush into the crankcase. You will hear air spewing from the breather system. If air is blowing out the air filter end of the carburetor, you have intake valves that are not sealing a reflection of the tight intake valves when you adjusted them. Valve seat recession and wear caused the tight valves. When valves are not seating, they further carbon up or get pitted. I bought my XR650R from the original owner and the aftermarket air cleaner had not been sealing properly. The intake valves were badly pitted and leaking. Abrasive debris also damaged the rings and cylinder wall as noted in the earlier leak down test video. This kind of damage calls for a top end teardown and remedy. This is why I always start with a leak down test. If the valves and rings are sealing, a good score on the leak down test without ring blow by, there is another cause for oil in the breather system and up the intake stream. Too much oil accumulated in the crankcase. I would check the oil strainer in the front frame down tube and also the oil screen at the right side, clutch side, of the crankcase. The filter screen at the lower edge of the crankcase is accessible with the right side cover removed. Since the XR650R engine is a unit construction, like most modern motorcycle engines, the transmission is also part of the engine's lubrication system. Debris from the clutch and transmission 
will filter through the crankcase oil screen and can clog that screen. The screen gets surfaced infrequently, typically when replacing clutch frictions. If you have an early XR650R like mine, consider installing the updated clutch guide, part number 22116MBN671, while you have the cover removed. You can inspect the clutch frictions at the same time. Tudor replied, What you are telling me is on the same plane of thought as mine. Since I don't have the right tools for measurements and such, I'm taking the bike to a shop where it will be put through the steps you described. Appreciate the idea for the compression tool. Very smart, I like it. I really hoped maybe I had overlooked something really basic, but my worst fears must now be faced. When I clean the carb, it starts pretty much first kick, cold and hot, pulls hard, no apparent smoke, not even decelerating, which made me think valve seals are okay still, but as soon as it starts to gunk up the carb, runs lean, hangs the revs, idles high, then low, and all that. Since I'm not the first owner, maybe I should have done it before. As for the clutch, I recently swapped the outer basket, quite a bit of play, both rotational with the gear, and quite some radial movement as well. My bike is an O2. It has about 25,000 miles, maybe a few more when the odometer was off. I'm currently running 1534 gearing, have tried others too. I also changed the center guide you mentioned, and to my surprise it already had the updated part. Clutch pack is under 6,000 miles and looked like new. Works and feels very solid. I will write here what I find as soon as I have conclusive evidence. Maybe it will be helpful to other XR diehards as well. Thank you, Tudor. And I replied, you're very welcome, Tudor. Didn't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm pragmatic. Rolling out blow-by is always the first step, whether we're comfortable with the outcome or not. Without clarifying cylinder and valve seal, pursuing other remedies is pointless. Glad you understand. You might try a simple compression check to see whether the valves are leaking badly before doing a cylinder leak down check. Rings can be deceptive, while valves will often show up with a simple compression test. My approach would be to buy a leak down tool that you can use for years on your bikes and automotive engines. It's far less costly than a dealership diagnostics check. My snap-on tester has been used a hundred or more times since the early 80s. Here's a contemporary affordable OTC tool that has a good reputation. There are even less expensive leak down testers at Amazon's product listings, but I would trust this tool. Weigh the tool's cost against at least an hour's labor at the dealership. The homemade tool I described is actually my valve hold tool used for removing and changing valve springs with the cylinder head in place. Years ago, many of us made these tools for that purpose. As an O2 XR650R, your update clutch guide bushing may have been factory or added by a previous owner. Glad you checked when you renewed the clutch pack. The desired bushing has four lubrication holes. Your gearing is quite tall. Must be a supermoto or primarily highway use. Please keep us informed about the engine's condition and path you take. The channel's video on top end rebuilding and the LA sleeve upgrade will prove useful if you need to go down that road. If you need to run this diagnostics test, review the channel videos that cover leak down testing. This is the optimal test for compression loss percentages and even better, where that leakage goes. Compression is one of the six musts an engine needs to run properly. Join us at night school for Motorcycle Mechanics Session 3 for an in-depth look at the six musts. Thanks for subscribing and join us.